Hey guys, so let's talk about the versions of Python. So this video is gonna look at the different versions of Python, the 2X branch and the 3X branch. I'm gonna explain what that is. And uh, you're also gonna learn about software versioning and how to understand them in general. So let me just jump into it. So in Python, you have two big branches. You have the 2X branch, so you got Python 2. Point, started out with 2.0 and 2.1, 2.2. And then you have the 3x version of Python 3, 3.1, 3.2, 3. whatever. Right now, as I record this, Python is at 3.8. Now, the first thing you got to understand is that the major versions are really the significant versions most of the time. What do I be? What do I mean by the major version? Version two of Python versus version three. So if you have a Python code that's written in Python 2.x, meaning x could be 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, etc., um, that Python will not be compatible, at least not 100% compatible with Python 3.x, uh, 3.1, 3.2, 3.5, 6, 7, 8. And uh, the reason they decided to create a second branch of Python, I think of a branch like a tree branch, the first branch of Python, the 2x branch, is here, and then you got the 3x branch here. And the reason they decided to create a new Python is because I guess the old Python code base, the 2x branch code base, was just uh, just had some fundamental problems with it that they decided it was better just to rebuild from scratch. You see this every once in a while with Studio Web uh, version one, two, three, and uh, four. No, version one, two, three was one branch of code, if you will, one code base. And with Studio Web 4, we rewrote from scratch a brand new code base because the old code was just so old that we had to let it, let it go. You see this with other major projects, um, or real major projects like Mac OS. Mac OS 1 through 9 was, I think, Pascal-based, Pascal programming language. It was designed for computers of that time. And uh, Steve Jobs made the hard choice of saying, well, with the next version of, of uh, Mac OS, we're going to have to use a whole new operating system. So they used uh, the next operating system. I talked about this in a video recently. Anyhow, so you have the major version and the major, minor version. So within Python, you have the 2x branch versus the 3x branch. If you have a Python app written for 2x, it's not going to work probably in 3x. You're going to have to rewrite some of the code. It's not huge, but it still has to be done. There will have, be, there'll have to be uh, some work done. Now, how big of a difference is it? Video is sponsored by Kite, which is a machine learning powered plugin that works with major code editors like Atom, VS Code, Sublime, Vim, and PyCharm. And basically, they use machine learning to superpower code completions. So I'm showing you Kite in action so you can see how it works. Kite uses ranked completions that are sorted by relevance rather than popularity or alphabetical order. Kite has line of code completion, so it completes a full line of code. They have something called Intelligent Snippets, which is an advanced function call experience using machine learning to suggest placeholder values. Finally, if you look on the uh, right-hand side, as the cursor moves, you see an example of something called Copilot, which uh, basically displays the docs relative to wherever your cursor happens to be. One of the big selling points for me about Kite is that it will reduce the number of lines of code that you write by as much as 50%. As you know, I don't take many sponsors, so this is a worthwhile product to get into, and it's free. Link is below. In terms of the code that you write, it might be, I don't know, 75, 85, 90% the same. It's hard to say. Um, so it's not a huge job to convert a Python 2 app to a Python 3, but it's a job. There's no question about it. There are converter uh, software out there, but it's not perfect. But anyway, these days, if you're writing Python, you should not even think about using Python 2. Definitely use the Python 3 branch. Uh, I just mentioned this because we're learning about versioning and software and subversion, which, which we're going to get into soon. And you're also learning about, um, well, also, you might run into some Python 2 once, you know, some old apps you might have to update. Anyhow, 
So let's jump into the subversion. So you got the, the major versions, which are two, the two branch and the three branch, and then you have the subversion. So 2.1, that's a subversion. 2.1, uh, 2.2, that's another subversion. 2.3, and then I guess you get the sub subversions. You got 2.1.2. 2.1.3, 2.1.4, and the same thing on the 3x branch. We have 3.1, 3.2, 3.0, you know, bubble boom, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you can have 3.7.2. Now, why do they have major versions and subversions? Major version means a big, huge break from the previous version. So when you go from 2 to 3, massive break in Python, uh, different code base. But when you go to a subversion 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, this is typically, well, it's not typically, it's always a much more minor update. Uh, there will be total, if not complete, backward compa compatibility between, if you write code for 3.5 and you're writing, and your Python is writing in, your, excuse me, and your Python code is running in version 3.8 of Python, Chances are your code's going to run perfectly fine. You may have to change one or two things. Typically, in the sub subversions, in the subversions, you're going to have small additions and bug fixes. Rarely you're going to see with a subversion that it's going to break the previous code. So there you go. So when you see a subversion uh, come out, you should kind of just uh, glance at it, see, mm, okay, this is what they've done new. So what I did. Uh, when I created my Python course, I created it, I started planning it at 3.5. I wrote most of it when, it, when Python was in 3.6. And uh, now we're at 3.8, it was released recently. Is there a difference between 3.6 and 3.8? Minor, minor difference. You can go to the Python docs, go to python.org, you can actually see what is the differences. A lot of it is additions, behind the scenes stuff that won't affect you as a Python coder or your understanding of Python. So some people have asked, eh, are you gonna update the Python course? And I go, no, because what that I, what I teach in Python, uh, the, uh, it hasn't changed at all, as far as I can tell, I took a look in 3.78, like not at all, there's no difference at all. So there's no reason. And uh, so how about the new stuff they've included in Python 3.6, 3.7. The new stuff, um, a lot of it uh, may be marginally used and uh, not central to what I wanted to teach. That being said, I don't, I'm not saying that it's not important stuff. I'm sure it is important given circumstances. Now, this brings me back to a broader question with regards to uh, learning technology and code and so on. The broader, the, the, it comes to the philosophy, my need to nerd philosophy. You have to look at learning technology and programming languages from a need to nerd philosophy point of view. It is not possible that you're gonna know everything about Python. Python is vast, it's vast, huge language. That's part of its power is that it can do so much. Uh, so it's not possible, it's not reasonable to think that you're gonna learn even three quarters of it, let alone the whole thing. It's not possible, so that's okay. Because once you understand Python and the ecosystem and how it works and the basics of the language, and you've written one or two things, then you will learn what you need to learn at the time. Need to know philosophy. It's my little play on words based on the need to know philosophy. Uh, yeah, and this goes for any programming language or any technologies. You keep an eye out on what the changes are. And, uh, you know, one of the easy ways to check whether or not you have to update your Python code is let's say you wrote Python code for 3.6 or 3.7 and 3.8 comes out and you decide to upgrade and you don't necessarily have to upgrade your Python to do that, but you decide to upgrade the runtime. Basically, Python code has to be run by the Python app. Um, so you upgrade to 3.8 and you throw in your Python code, your 3.6 Python code, or you wrote it when it was 3.6, and chances are you'll see it'll run just fine. If something has changed, the Python interpreter will tell you. We'll say, hey, you know, you gotta change this here. Oh, okay, then you learn that and you change it, it's no big deal. So, when you're looking at versions of software, whether it be programming languages, whether it be a frameworks like uh, an Express.js or a PHP Laravel or Python Django or Flask, you have to pay more attention to the major versions, that's where you're gonna have significant changes, like when Python went from 2x to 3x, less consideration, less concern 
about the minor updates. Usually a lot of times the minor updates are just bug fixes and optimizations, which probably will not break your code. Might optimize your code, it might make your code run faster, but it won't break it. Like you see in the PHP world, it went from PHP 5 at one point, it was like 5.1 and 2 and 4 or whatever, and then it went to a major version, they skipped 6 for political and not political, but for marketing reasons, they skipped 6, was version 6 of PHP, and they went to PHP 7. Now PHP 7 was a huge overhaul uh, because of the fact it uh, they they rewrote a lot of stuff, they changed core behavior, they added a lot of capability in terms of object-oriented PHP. But again, most of your PHP 5 code will work just fine in PHP 7. You get the idea. So I hope you found this video informative, and uh, there you go. If you want to learn Python, you want to learn web development, check below got my links, I gotta shamelessly self-promote, and I have a web hosting company who will pay for your training with me. Check the link below, you buy hosting from them for one year, that's the only obligation. You're gonna need a website if you're gonna learn to code, you're gonna wanna get a job, you're gonna need a website to have your place on the web. Might as well have the web hosting company pay for your training. So you link below, take you to a page, and uh, you just click through, and you choose what hosting program you want, and uh, yeah, and then you send me the receipt and I'll unlock whatever you want, whatever package you want. You see there's a couple packages in there. And uh, that's about it. We'll talk soon. I hope you found this video informative. Mm -hmm.